Hi, my name is Jill Newman, and I'm a member of our Holy Infant Health Ministry. Since we're in the fall season, I thought I would take a few moments to share some fall safety tips and tricks. Falls are the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries in adults over the age of 65, and it is estimated that one in three adults over the age of 65 will fall this year. While falls threaten our safety and independence, they are not inevitable. Falls, for a very large extent, can be preventable. Here are some tips to keep you and your loved ones safe and healthy. Tip one, have a conversation with your doctor. Use this time to review prescriptions, supplements, and over-the-counter medications. Share any details of falls you've already had. Review any health conditions related to your eyes and your ears. And talk about your physical activity routine. Tip two, remove hazards from around your house. Think about relocating boxes, pile, clutter, and cords. Clear high traffic areas. Think about moving things like coffee tables, chairs, decorations, plants. Use double stick tape or slip resistance backing underneath rugs or just remove the loose rugs altogether. Store common daily necessities at a safe and reasonable height and with an easy reach. Think about things like clothing, toiletries, food, dishes, cooking tools, books, and ask for assistance when you're going to be retrieving seasonal or occasional items. And then have mops or Swiffers handy in case there's a spill so that you can limit your need to bend or stoop. Tip three, consider your footwear, both shoes and slippers. Footwear plays a really big role in the support and safety of fall prevention. You want to limit the time that you spend in stockings, socks, and bare feet. Aim to have sturdy, supportive, and non-slippery shoes for the majority of your day. Tip four, light up your life. Trying to keep your house lit both day and night can help you to avoid slips, trips, and falls in the dark. Use night lights in your bedroom, bathroom, and hallways. Have a clear path lit to your um, have a clear path to your light switches in all rooms, and consider glow in the dark or illuminated switches uh, and plate covers. Always turn on the lights before going up or down your stairs. Have flashlights easily accessible, and consider lamp timers to reduce the amount of time that you need to walk through or across a room in the dark. Set the timer for when you're already planning to be safely in your bedroom. Tip five, give thought to assistive devices and aids that might help. Things like canes or walkers, handrails and hallways and on both sides of your staircase, grab bars and showers and tubs and beside the toilet, non-slip treads for stairs and steps both inside and out, a raised toilet seat, a shower bench or a shower seat and a handheld shower nozzle, and then possibly a medical alert device. These are worn around your neck and these devices can give you a sense of security when you're home. In addition to the standard call function, they can also be used to detect and report your fall. And tip six, have a friend or a family member or a neighbor assist you. Consider tasks that may be unsafe for one person or might require an extra set of hands. Things like using ladders, moving heavy objects, rearranging furniture, exercising, these are a few opportunities. And additionally, if you're feeling tired or unwell, an extra pair of hands can be really helpful and the company can be really nice. To wrap it up, I'd like to share a passage, portion of a passage from Ecclesiastes 4, 9-12. Two people are better than one because together they have a good reward for their hard work. If one falls, the other can help his friend get up but how tragic it is for the one who is all alone when he falls. Be safe and God bless.